I just filmed a video where I was a little salty, a little questioning about the Goodreads challenge and the Goodreads Choice Awards and the ways in which it perpetuates popular authors with no really account for other authors. If every author wins the same award every single year, then what really is the point of this award? Is it really to do anything other than to market books? Which I guess is a reason if that is what they want to. I just don't think that that's what they're marketing as. So there's another thing on Goodreads, because apparently I'm just going to make Goodreads content. That is the 60 most read books of the 2022 reading challenge. I appreciate this because it's not only releases of 2022, which is helpful because I tend to read the most books from the year before because of library holds and all of those things that sometimes like you haven't read as many books from this year. Like a lot of these are probably going to be 2020 and 2021 releases, which I've read a lot more of. So we're going to go on and I'm going to give myself one point for every book I have read, and then two if I've read it in 2022. I think that that's a nice thing. I like competitions, I like things, and we're gonna have some fun. So let's go. The first one is It Ends With Us. I have never read Colleen Hoover, and I won't say I never will. I, I just don't think I'm going to. And then we have The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. That is one point. I read it several years ago. We have another Colleen Hoover, which I have not read. We have The Love Hypothesis. The question is, like, I know very, very few people who actually like Colleen Hoover, so why is she so popular? Because, again, we have a third one. Oh my goodness. In the top seven, there is four Colleen Hoovers. Book Lovers is a book that I have not read. And then I have read Crawdads. People we meet on vacation. Do I get half points for books I DNF'd? This is a book that I DNF'd last year. I had started it and I was just really unhappy that she was just crapping on social media. I was like, darling, that is where your audience is. Can you not be like, every influencer is so fake and they don't even realize I'm fake. And I don't know why I became British in that. But I don't know, as someone who makes online content, whenever it's like everyone who interacts on anything online is all oh, so fake. It's like, yeah, I'm fake in the way that it is sometimes a little cater like I'm going to be intentional that does not mean I'm being fake anyways it drives me crazy the midnight library I have also not read Malibu Rising I have read there we go another Colleen Hoover I want to know how many books Colleen Hoover has wrote because this is a lot of books okay Beach Read another book Daisy Jones I have read Sodom Achilles I have read The Court of Thorns and Roses I have not read I've only read Throne of Glass which is my entry into book two because I read it and I was so confused that I went and searched up a book review and I found this and here almost six years later I am here. Silent Patient I have not read, The Love Deception I have not read, The Paris Apartment I have not read, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder I have not read. I am I'm not really a popular hoe I guess. The last thing he told me, no, Heartstopper I have read, The Summer I Turned Pretty I have read, the Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I have read. Look at me. I love how I go like nothing, 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 and then just a full course ahead. Normal People, I have read. And that's 10 out of 25. That's not bad. I am failing though. And then A Court of Mist and Fury, have not read. It happened one summer. I have not read. The Maid, I have not read. I, I know that there's like The Maid and then The Maid. Like there's the one that became a Netflix series, which I believe is a memoir. And then there's a Maid this, and it's a thriller. And I feel like both of them have thriller aspects because the documentary she's running from an abusive boyfriend I believe or something like that the father of her child and I would really like like a really explanatory video or post or something explaining the difference because I cannot figure out the difference between these books and I'm kind of confused half which one is the fiction which one is not because it's like the same is it the same book does someone make a fictional book about the book I don't know I'm, I'm just always confused and then Heartstopper volume 2 I have read it and then the Unhoneymooners I have not read and then we got our first two points because I have read Jeanette McCurdy. And then Hook, Line, and Sinker. I think this is the first one I don't actually naturally recognize. The House of Sky and Breath. Things We Never Got Over. I like the title of that a lot. I especially like the idea, like especially if it's more like complicated and looking like I feel like it might be a romance, but I don't dislike romance. I actually really, really like romance in other books. I find sometimes though when it's the way that romance is done. It just doesn't make me happy. I'm not a person who is incredibly like attraction focused in my romantic relationships, which make reading romance books very unfulfilling often. Every Summer After by Carly Fortin. It starts with Us by Colleen Hoover. It's interesting because that's one of the ones that I recognize and it is like the eighth one. The House of the Cerulean Sea. I have read that. I have an entire video about problematic things in books about it. 
Beautiful World, Where Are You? I have also read that. Lessons in Chemistry, I have not read. Cersei, I have read. All Your Perfects, let me guess, Colleen Hoover. Love Other Worlds by Christina Lauren. The Guest List by Lucy Foley. Red, White, and Royal Blue, I have not read. Crying Nature Mark, a book that I keep on putting on my Libby app and keep on not reading because I was already like intimidated by it and then I went through a familiar loss and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. Especially like it also had relations to food. Like in September, I was just like crying as I was eating my grandfather's last batch of soup he ever made me. So I, I don't know if I can read it, Crying Nature Mark. I feel like it would be helpful, but also really hard to get over that initial hump of reading. If someone has read this as they're going through grief, I would love to hear it. Regretting You by Colleen Hoover. How many books has this woman written? Heart Bones by Colleen Hoover. Shatter Me. There we go. We are, we are definitely failing now. We currently have 16 books and 17 points out of 48. Harry Potter. I have read they both died at the end. I read this book like way back when it was first out and I actually quite liked it. It's very interesting that and Son of Achilles I feel like blew up crazily after I read them which was very interesting to have like read a book and like like known it was like not unpopular but being like I like this, I like this, I like this and then go meteoric and yeah it's very interesting. Love on the Brain by Ali Hazelwood. One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reads. I really want to go into the backdated books of Taylor Jenkins Reads and read them. I think they'd be really interesting. Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. I feel like this is one of the first ones that's like a favorite. I'm also so surprised that fantasy has not really hit it very much. Like I think of fantasy as like a very common genre, probably because it's a more common genre on booktube and like in things, but it's very surprising that it's not very like on here. Like I would think that it would be more popular in here. Hail Mary by Andy Weir. I've actually heard really good things about it and that's a book that is on like my very very long list of books that I want to read. Layla by Colleen Hoover. I want to know that like if I take out all the Colleen Hoover books which are probably close to 15 how much my book is. Then Alice Feeney, Rock Paper Scissors, a book that I do not know. Apples Never Fall. Oh I forgot that these are out of 60 not out of 100. And then Atomic Habits which is one of the first like non-fiction general books. A Flicker in the Dark, another book that I've not read. And then The Vanishing Half. I wish this was 100 because The Vanishing Half is the 60th book and that puts me at exactly 20 books and it gives me 21 if I'm giving myself an extra point for having read one of them during the this year. 21 out of 60 gives me about a 35% which means I'm not popular guys. I need to get a Galinda makeover to be popular and then I would be uh then I would be able to read all the Colleen Hoover books. Okay let, let's do some googling books number whenever people like google in videos it looks cool and whenever you google in real life it's not nearly as cool number of books in colleen hoover at least 43 <laughs> what does it mean to have at least 43 like do they not know no i feel like that's actually not an uncommon thing to be like there's some short story stuff or there's some nonfiction stuff. We're not counting them. But 43. Okay. She is 42. Okay, that is impressive. That is a lot more books than Year She's Alive or like Year She has been like in majority, which is I'm assuming when she started. And by that, I also mean that like she's a Victorian woman because in majority is kind of the word. She came into her majority early. She also has three children. Darling, you are, you are, you are working hard. Maybe I need to have more respect for her. And she started in 2012. So in 10 years, she's had 43 books. I don't want to do the math on that. Is she a woman kind of like James Patterson who doesn't write her own books? Do I need to, to go into the dark side of that? I'm going to do some research. Okay, so she had 10 books in the top 60, which meant that if I, you know, add some inflation, I got a 42%. 10 of the top 60 books are Colleen Hoover, which is impressive, lady. Like, good job. I am proud of you. You work hard. I don't fully understand what is going on and I actually I should not judge because I've not read her books. I have heard very good signs and mostly really bad and mostly perpetuating of abusive relationships which is not something that I even want to put like my piggy toe in. But yeah I if I if I take out those 10 books and just go out of 50 that means that I get a 42% which means that if I'm a really good student and I smile a lot and I'm like oh yes here are all my issues I might get it bumped up to a 50%. I could be like I read a lot of other books that weren't in here. Maybe we'll see that. 
Um, I wonder, I wonder if I look at the top books of 2021 on the same list, if I would have the same number. Last year's 2021 thing was only out of 51 instead of 60. It only had two Colleen Hoovers, which is interesting. Where did her popularity like go up a lot last year? Because I don't think she published like eight books. These are backdated things. So I think like Book Talk does have a high, high thing. The other thing that is really, really strange is I got 25 out of 51. That is a lot more significant. We have like The Great Gatsby, Pride and Prejudice, 1984, like all of these things that are like very classic books. I don't think there was a single classic on 2022. Did people stop reading them? Or was it like made by different metrics? Like what was the thing? Because I don't think people just stopped reading like The Great Gatsby and Pride and Prejudice, but like why were so many classics on last year's list? And I don't think there was a single classic. Like I didn't name a single one. So who made it? Like who changed the algorithm or who changed the person counting how they did it? I'm very intrigued because I expected to have a much higher number of books because like I've read a lot of like the most popular books on Goodreads overall, I think. So yeah, very, very interesting. But I am here to tell you of my lack of popularity again, because I still only got just shy of 50%. But I hope that you will have fun. If you want to tell me how many books you read out of last year's list or anything like that, do you think that these are fair? Do you, what do you, what are your thoughts on what is ranked high and what is what ranked low? What are the top books that you've read this year? I don't know, I'm going to ask you all the questions, but this was just a fun thing. I, I like fun things sometimes, so I will see you next time. So I think I need to come on here and confess some things because I was fine when I was talking about this, you know, in the video, when I was reviewing it, when I was Googling, but now after editing most of the video, I have to come back and say, the hooks have started to grapple in, you know, they're pulling me being like, Kier, why don't you just read one Colleen Hoover? You have to understand why you have to read one Colleen Hoover. If she has 10 books out of the top 60, four in the top seven, don't you have to understand? Maybe you're being too judgmental. Maybe you don't know what's good for you. Maybe you just need to read one more book. Step across 